Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Friday Night Frenzy, once again presented by the Venice Pub at Pizzeria of Ishpeming. I'm Jerry Taylor. As you can probably tell, I'm not in our studios in Ishpeming right now. I'm up here at Houghton at the John McKinnon Student Ice Arena, where Michigan Tech and Alabama Huntsville are currently getting ready to play their third overtime of this game one, round one of the WCHA playoffs. We will have highlights from this game, as well as highlights from boys basketball games, as was district final night across the Upper Peninsula. ABC 10 Sam Ali will have those highlights in just a little bit. But we do begin the frenzy tonight on the hardwood. Michigan Tech, the Lady Huskies, playing in the NCAA 2 tournament, hosting a game this evening. And let's go to those highlights right about now. The Huskies face the Cedarville Yellow Jackets, who made the D2 tourney for the first time in school history. Middle of the first half, Michigan Tech on top. Morgan Anderson knocks down three off the feed from Kylie Moxley. More ball movement by the Huskies. Brenna Heisey loves shots from the baseline. She knocks it down. Just before the half, Heisey finds Kelly Guy wide open for three. Guy was four of four from downtown in the first half, and the Huskies led 40-35 at the break. With less than four minutes to go in the game, Jillian Ritchie makes a big time bucket from deep. The senior extends Tech's lead to nine. Danielle Blake scored a couple of big hoops toward the end, lifting the Huskies to the 71-59 win over Cedarville. They came in like a, like a tournament team. I mean, this is a situation that we're in right now where every team is gonna be very, very good and very powerful and very good at every position. And down the stretch, we were able to get the stops and specifically the rebounds that we needed in order to close the game out. Inside out was working well for us when every time we got the ball inside, if they were collapsing, then we were able to kick out for three and also driving in on the seams, they had people helping in. Every time uh, we brought the ball down low, if they had two people, we were able to kick it out and we had openings that way. Now to the other playoff game at the SDC tonight. Michigan Tech played Alabama Huntsville in the first round of the WCHA playoffs. No score in the second. Joe Lesperance makes his way to the net. Carmine Guerrero comes up with the puck. Still in the middle frame, the Huskies with even more pressure. Tanner Caro scores, or does he? The referee blows the whistle before the puck crosses the line. Therefore, no goal, and we have no score after two. Let's jump ahead to the third. Tanner Caro puts another shot on goal, and it squirts through the Guerrero's pads and out. And it was nothing, nothing after 60 minutes of play. Obviously, this hockey game is still in progress. We will have full highlights and reactions sometime tonight or Saturday morning on our website at ABC10. UP.com. Earlier action today in the NCAA Midwest Region bracket involving the other teams Michigan Tech may have to face in the tournament. Ashland defeated Southern Indiana 81-61, so the Huskies and Eagles will play tomorrow night. Lewis defeated Parkside 80-66, and Wayne State over Drury 75-61. So it's your matchups tomorrow night beginning at 5 o'clock at the SDC. Wayne State will play Lewis at 5 p.m. Michigan Tech takes on Ashland at 7.30. Also, college hockey tonight, NMU on the road, playing Bowling Green. The Falcons, remember, they swept the Falcons in BG earlier in the season, back about a month ago. And NMU, unfortunately, fell 3-2 in overtime to the Falcons. Shane Suth and Luke Eibler with the goals for NMU. The Wildcats must win tomorrow in order to keep their season alive and force a game three in Bowling Green on Sunday. That's all for Stuff From Here in Houghton. Let's take a quick commercial break. When we come back, High School Hoops for Sam Ali. This is Jerry Taylor from John McKinnis Student SMU. And welcome back to Friday Night Frenzy, once again presented by the Venice Pub and Pizzeria of Ishpeming. I'm Sam Ali. Boys basketball teams across the UP were crowned district champs tonight. We begin our high school hoops coverage in Delta County, where rivals Escanaba and Gladstone played for one of those big, shiny trophies. This game was loud and went down to the wire just the way we like it. Let's go straight to the fourth. Gladstone down too late. They work the ball back inside to Hunter Garling. He scores and we have a tie game. Moments later, Tyler Hardwick goes up and gets the layup to fall. Eskimos lead, but the Braves would hit two free throws to tie the game. And now it's the Eskies ball with less, less than 30 seconds to go. They get a clean, clean three-pointer off right here. And then that misses. The shot gets rebounded. Tyler Hardwick for the win. He gets it. Shot goes in at the bottom. The Braves fans are stunned. Escanaba wins the district championship in epic fashion. 32 to 30, the final score. So Escanaba faces Sheboygan as they defeat Ogima Heights 66 to 58. 
That Class B Regional Semifinal will be on Monday. I believe that game may be in Manistique. Game time to be determined. Ishpeming and Nagani gave us one of the best games yet in their storied rivalry tonight. As Nagani's Jay Laurie plays king of the mountain with this rebound, the Miners up by a comfortable 8, 12 to 20. Ishpeming though, they're going to turn the tables with this three-pointer from Kyle Torres to take the lead 23 to 22. Dre Tuminen going to put the Miners right back with this five-star drive. Nagani leading by four, but Nick Comment breaks that number down by two with this steal and score with less than a minute left. Mere seconds later, Thomas Finnegan gets the ball to Ozzy Corp, who draws the score and more. Suddenly, the Hematites are up only 16 with seconds left. Last chance for Nagani, but Corp throws a block party. Not just a one-man block party, but a whole gym block party as Ishpeming and their fans explode in celebration of the 32-31 victory. Our next game features Westwood facing Iron Mountain. Early first quarter, ball goes to Carson Wonders. I wonder what's going to happen. Two points, that's what. He had 23 for the game, tie game early on. Later, the Patriots down three, but Jacob Kierzek says not anymore. Westwood keeping pace with Iron Mountain. Closing seconds of the first, Luke Gray's rainbow three won't go, but Ryan Stanaway is there to put it in at the buzzer. Patriots lead after one quarter. Later, Luke Gray, Luke, later, Luke Gray dribbles, tries to get past his defender. His pocket get, is going to get picked. Jacob Mongrain ends up with the ball. He finds Kyle Johnson for the contested layup. Tie game again. And with time ticking down in the fourth quarter, 2-1, the Mountaineers win it in convincing fashion. Final score, 72-40. In Class D, Munising defeated Big Bay Dinox, 68-45. It was Forest Park over Bessemer, 75-42. We were unable to find out the result of the Lake Linden Jeffers game, but all three of the winners here will move on to the Class D Regional next week. One more team will join them in the Regional at Nagani. And that team would be either North Dickinson or North Central. Let's take a look at what happened. Midway in the first, Jets trying to get the ball to Jason Whitens. He rises up and fills it up. Bang! Jets lead by three. The Nordics would respond though. They get it to Noah Berg. And he looks, he finds the cutter, but no. Back outside to Reggie Johnson. Bang! Nothing but net. Nordics take the lead early in the first. North Dickinson looks to stick with the outside attack. Noah Berg shows, is Noah Berg right here? He's going to show off his touch. Boom! Nordics extend their lead. But the Jets would storm back. Bobby Kleeman with the circus shot. Easy for him though. North Central Road, a strong second half to victory. Final score, 72 to 55. Finally tonight, in case you missed our top story at 5.30, the Houghton High School hockey team played in the Division III semifinals today in Plymouth. Hey Steve, roll the highlight. The Gremlins have a quick pregame meeting to discuss how many goals, how many goals they were going to score. Early first period, Houghton looking for some quick offense, and unbeknownst to the goalie, Eric Walter shows up and scores. Gremlins strike first with a 1-0 lead. Late, later in the first, John Bostwick at the right circle finds Reed Piedla for the wrister. He scores and Houghton is up to zilch. Closing moments of the first though, Wyatt Liston goes around the net and he joins the party. He scores and the Gremlins are up three after one period of play and the Gremlin fans are loving what they see. Jump to the third period, Gremlins deep in flint power zone and Jacob Cruz puts it between the pipes and Houghton can Smell the victory already. Final seconds though, puck is cleared and baby, we are going to the finals. The Houghton Gremlins win by a final score of 4-1. to one. They will go on to play Cranbrook tomorrow at 2 p.m. in Plymouth. And that's going to do it for the Friday Night Frenzy for the winter sports season. Don't forget that the Michigan Tech men's basketball team plays in the first round of the NCAA tournament against Indianapolis. Tip-off is set for noon Eastern time in Louisville. The WCHA playoffs continue tomorrow in Houghton for the Huskies and in Bowling Green for the Wildcats. Jimmy Kimmel is next. Have a great weekend, everyone. From all of us here at ABC 10, good night.